I have. I mightn't take it all credit, but anyway. Can I, can I welcome anyway, the Minister for Health? Take the order of uh, contributions. Uh, Deputy Niall Collins is next. Deputy um, M M Mary Mitchell O'Connor. Sorry? And Deputy O'Quillan is here as well. Sorry, Deputy Cuvino O'Quillan. Okay, thank you, Cahir. Look, um, I want to welcome the fact that we're having this debate in the House today on the joint Oireachtas Committee on Health and Children's Report and Organ Donation. And I want at the beginning to pay tribute to the members of the committee um, who participated in the hearings. Um, and in particular, I want to thank Deputy uh, Keller in his absence, Deputy O'Quillan, uh, as the main opposition spokespeople in the House for their cooperation and for their participation. Um, Cahir, look, early last year, Many of us in this House were contacted by a number of people regarding the issue of organ donation. The people who were affected either undergoing dialysis, were awaiting transplant, or people who had received transplants and people who had made donations left a lasting impression. One of the meetings that stood out for me last year was I had the pleasure of meeting with Shane Finnegan and Joe Brawley, along with people from Cork, to hear their story directly. And following on from their meetings, I was struck, Cahirak, by their positive and uplifting story. And it was clear to me and to other members in the Health Committee that our policy regarding organ donation and approach needed to be reflected upon and changed. And it's only when one sits down with people directly affected that one realises the severe impact that transplantations have on the lives of so many people. The waiting, the anticipation, the phone call, the ambulance, the journey to the hospital, and then the stories of false dawns are also the stories of positivity, of success, and of new life being given, a second chance. And the courage and the bravery of all the people that I've met, and I'm sure many more in this house today, were impressive. Their honesty in relaying their stories in reliving what they went through or what they were going through was personal and touching and a privilege. But the meetings also highlighted many of the structural challenges which face organ donation in Ireland. And thankfully, the Department of Health under Minister Riley had also commenced the process of consultation regarding our policy. And everyone in this House or in the Shannon who meets many delegation and groups and vested interest in a wide variety of issues will know that they all have a story to tell. But what struck me on this issue was the near uniformity of opinion, the same problems, the same difficulties across the country. Our current system of organ donation is an opt-in one, which requires an explicit decision to donate to be made either by the person prior to their death or by family members after death. Even though we have a generous culture of organ donation in Ireland, as our report shows to the House today, we consistently rank low at just 23rd in the European League table behind all other countries that have a soft opt-out system. In June 2012, more than 1,700 Irish adults were receiving hemodialysis. Yet throughout all of 2012, just 163 renal transplants were carried out in the Republic of Ireland. To meet the needs of those people receiving hemodialysis, our health system should be performing in the region of 300 kidney transplants per year. Our current practice of using the opt-in system, or express consent, is used by only a small minority of countries in the EU. Countries that have changed to the opt-in system, or the opt-out system, have seen significant increase in their rates of organ donation. Over a three-year period after making the change to opt-out systems, Belgium saw its rate of organ donation increase by 100%, while over the same period, Singapore saw an increase of a massive 700%. And over recent years, there have been suggestions that we should change to a soft out system with a presumption of consent to donate upon death unless specifically stated otherwise. And it is important to state that even if this change was made, we must ensure that in all instances, a person's family has that final say. This maintains the principle that donation is a gift and would help in changing public attitudes so that donation becomes the norm not the exception. And this morning, we see Liam Neeson speak so eloquently about his late wife and her gift of organ donation, which today has given three people 
a new opportunity to live life. We have a chronic shortage of deceased organs available for donation. In 2011, when an estimated 250 to 300 kidneys were required, only 164 deceased kidney donor transplants were carried out. This suggests Coherent that our current system is not working and that a review is required so that many people who are in need of an organ transplant can be helped. The committee was of the view that this issue is something that is being or has been debated throughout the world and it was about time that we as a country started to look seriously at the changes that we need to make so that our organ rate of donation can be increased. Countries that have changed to opt-out systems have seen significant increases in organ donation rates. Any similar increase here could have a hugely positive impact on those who require a transplant and ultimately would help save lives. In April of last year, the Joint Committee held two public hearings examining organ donation in Ireland. During those hearings, we heard the views of a wide range of stakeholders, including organ donors, organ recipients, practicing clinicians and surgeons, support organizations, the National Organ Procurement Service, the Irish Medicines Board, and the Department of Health. These hearings greatly enhanced the Joint Committee's understanding of the position pertaining to organ donation and reaffirmed our view that the transition to a soft opt-out system is a necessary one. Over the course of our hearings, which were structured, the sessions were done so in a way so that we could hear from different advocates with a direct experience, from medical professionals and from those involved in policy development and the various legal aspects. I won't name all the people that we heard from, Cahirlook, but the testimonies of, of the people who received and gave organs were absolutely powerful. People like Christine Quinn, Noreen O'Hanlon, Michael Kiley, Annette Beston, Shane Finnegan and Joe Brawley, Joe Brawley, just to name a couple, struck a pertinent message with every member of the committee and with those who were involved. And equally, the medical and legal perspective we heard from a wide range of people. People like David Hickey, Peter Conlon, James O'Rourke, Coleman O'Loughlin, Rory Dwyer, Liam Plant, Brian O'Brien, all people of experience, of involvement in the medical field. And I want to thank all the witnesses who attended our hearings and who made submissions. They were informative, they were impressive contributions to the committee which helped us in our work and they gave us an insight that we would never have got and that we were required to get so that we could prepare a report and make recommendations. The Joint Committee on Health and Children warmly welcomes the Government's consultative process regarding its proposal to change the current practice of expressed consent or opt-in consent to one of opt-out consent in relation to organ donation in Ireland. Changing to the soft opt-out system has the potential to change public attitudes towards organ donation and more importantly to vastly increase the rate of organ donation. It is important that in such a new system the family of the next of kin, as I said, will always be consulted. And this will ensure, as I said, that the principle of donation is a gift to be maintained. The Joint Committee is strongly of the view, Cahirlook, that any transition to a soft opt-out system must be supported by increased investment in essential infrastructure, in transplant surgeons and trained support staff. Each kidney transplant has the potential to save €680,000 over a 15-year period. A short-term investment in our organ donation infrastructure has the potential to deliver real long-term savings for our health system, not to mention the long-term benefits to the lives of organ recipients, which must be of most paramount importance. The Joint Committee welcomes the, consult the current public consultation that proposes to change how Ireland operates its system of organ donation. This underpins the ethos that everyone should have the right to participate in decisions affecting their health and to have their concerns heard. Individual, individuals should be empowered to exercise control over their own health and to participate in the decision-making process around health law and policy. Any transition to a new soft opt-out system should be accompanied by a significant public awareness campaign prior to such changes having an effect. And the Joint Committee recommends that any transition to a soft opt-out system will only apply to organs available for donation to other patients and not to reproductive organs or other organs and tissues for research purposes. All persons over the age of 16 with a legally recognized mental capacity should have the ability to dissent from their presumed consent. 
for children under the age of 16 and, and those lacking the legal capacity to consent, the next of kin should retain full control over consent and the opt-in requirement should remain in these cases. The Joint Committee recommends the establishment of a national register withholding the consent to organ donation. This should be automatically accessible to organ procurement services and managed by the health departments. Since we have published our report, there have been significant developments in the area of organ donation. As part of Budget 2014, the Minister prioritised the development of a robust organ donation and transplantation infrastructure. An allocation of 2.92 million for organ donation and transplant services in 2014 was made available. And this extra funding is to be used to facilitate the employment of 19 whole-time equivalent positions. Included in the positions will be uh, consultants, network link nurses, organ procurement coordinators, which are vital to the, to, the, to the system, and quality officers. These additional resources, Cahillic, will be of great help in increasing the levels of organ donation and transplantation, and it will be a benefit to patients and their families. I hope that this additional funding, along with the committee's recommendations, reassures those who have been sceptical about what the committee were trying to achieve. As a committee, we recognise that changing our system of consent will only be of limited benefit without the necessary infrastructure to support the intended change. Our recommendations have clearly set out the need for a coordinated procurement and transplantation service across the country. The Minister's decision to allocate additional resources indicates that he too is aware of the need to fund additional posts so that the overall system can be changed. Over the course of the year, I hope that every person in the Minister's office, in the Department, in the HSC, and in this House will help to work to raise awareness of the importance of organ donation and also to ensure that the 2.9 million is used for the intended purpose. At the end of the year, I hope that we as a committee will come back and revisit this issue so that we can see the progress and monitor the progress being brought in delivering an improved environment for organ donation and transplantation in Ireland. Cahirik, I want to thank all the members of the Joint Committee for their contributions and cooperation on this very important body of work. And I want to again in particular congratulate and thank Deputy O'Quaylan and Deputy Kelleher and Deputy Healy, who's not here, and the Senators um, and Senator Van Turner on behalf of the Technical Group in the Senate, along with the members of my own party and the Labour Party, for their cooperation and diligence in this particular matter. I want to thank the R. Octus Library and Research Service, the Clerk of the Committee and the Secretariat of the Committee for their assistance in the production of, the, of their work and our report and in the organising of the hearings last April. Each week, their work enables the committee members to carry out our parliamentary duties and without the dedication of our committee secretariat, our work wouldn't be possible. And sometimes it goes unnoticed, but it should be acknowledged today. As a committee, we all work together. We put aside our partisan rivalry at times and we advocate on behalf of the people. We do have political differences, but for the most part, we put them aside and we work as a committee dealing with important and sensitive matters that transcend party politics. All members of the committee were united in endorsing this report, and we want to work to see an all-Ireland system, north and south, where an improved health system that delivers for people, in this case, in regarding organ donation. I hope that this report can provide a template for a way forward in the area of organ donation and transplant, and I welcome the fact that we're here today publishing this report and also speaking about it in the Chamber of Dáil Éireann. Uh, thank you very much.